This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. Part 2D, why we use per units in power systems. In this video, we will demonstrate another advantage of using per unit systems in power system calculation. Now this aspect is an extension of the previous video. In a power systems, multiple transformers result in multiple voltage levels at different points at the system. Now per units calculations ease this analysis by eliminating these voltage levels and bringing the impedances on both sides of the transformer on a single scale. So this is one advantage. We demonstrated this aspect in detail in part 2C with a single transformer. Here in part 2D, we will consider a power system with more than one transformer thus tackling multiple voltage levels. For this, we will take an example from the book Power System Analysis by John J. Granger. Example 2.6 states, Three parts of a single phase electric system are designated A, B, and C and connected to each other through transformers as shown in figure 2.10 below. The transformers are rated as so A to B is at 10,000 kVA, 13.8 kV on the primary side, 138 kV on the secondary side with a leakage reactance of 10%. So this is a step up transformer. And then the transformer between region B and C is also a 10,000 kVA transformer and it steps down the voltage from 138 kV in region B to a 69 kV in region C. And this transformer has a leakage reactance of 8%. Now the question states if the base in circuit B is chosen as 10,000 kVA, 138 kV, find the per unit impedance of the 300 ohm resistive load in circuit C referred to circuit C, B, and A, and draw the impedance diagram neglecting the magnetizing current, transformer resistance, and line impedance. So now let's solve this question. Keep in mind that this is a single phase system, so the base impedance calculations are different as compared to a three phase system. Since we are given the resistance in circuit C, we'll solve for the per unit values of that resistance at the base voltage of 69 kV. Now circuit C also has a base value of power of 10,000 kVA, so the base value of impedance simply becomes as follows. So the base value of impedance in circuit C is the, the base value of voltage in circuit C squared divided by the base value of power in circuit C, which we know to be 69 kV squared over 10,000 kVA. And we get 476 ohms. Now this is the base value of impedance for circuit C. The per unit impedance of circuit C becomes simply the actual impedance divided by the base. So the actual impedance is 300 ohms, which is given in the problem statement, divided by 476 ohms of the base impedance which we calculated above, and that gives us 0 0.63 per unit. Now based on part 2C of this series, we can stop here as we already know the per unit impedance for both transformers and the load. The load per unit impedance was calculated as 0.63 per unit and since the transformer leakage reactance was given as a percentage in the problem statement with the power base being the same for both transformers, we already know they correspond to per unit values. So the equivalent circuit for this problem statement looks like this. We have J.1 which is the impedance of the transformer of the first transformer and then we have J.08 per unit which is the impedance of the second transformer and then we have 0.63 per unit which is the resistance of the load. So we already have the equivalent circuit for this entire problem statement. Now despite solving part of this answer, we will go through and show the advantages of per unit systems. Now because the selection of the base in various regions of the system is determined by the turns ratio of the transformer and because the base KVA is the same in all regions of the system, the per unit impedance of the load transferred to any region of the system will be exactly the same. This will be illustrated in the remaining parts of this tutorial.
we have calculated the per unit impedance of the circuit referred to circuit B. And we also know that the per unit impedance in circuit B would be equal to the per unit impedance in circuit C, i.e. it will be equal to 0.63 per unit as described in part 2C of the series. We first find out the base value of the impedance in circuit B of this problem by taking 138 kV as the base value of voltage and the base value of power remains the same as 10k 10,000 kVA. So the base impedance for circuit B is simply equals to the voltage base in circuit B divided by the power base of circuit B. The voltage base being 138 kV squared, the power base being 10,000 kVA, which gives us 1904.4 ohms. Now, if we were to calculate the actual value of impedance in circuit B, we would multiply it with the square of the turns ratio of 2 to 1 and the actual value is 1200 ohms, meaning the ZB actual is simply 300 ohms, which is the resistance of the load in circuit C times the turns ratio 2 over 1 squared, and that gives us 1200 ohms. So that is the actual resistance or the actual impedance of the 300 ohms in circuit C reflected on circuit B. And lastly, when we convert the actual values to per unit, we find that it becomes essentially the same. Here's how. So the per unit impedance of circuit B is equal to the actual impedance of circuit B divided by the base impedance of circuit B. So that actual impedance was 1200 ohms, which we found that it was a reflection of circuit C. And the base impedance is 1904.4 ohms, which is dependent on the voltage and the base power of circuit B, and that gives us 0.63 per unit. So here we have proof that we what we learned in part 2C, which is that per unit impedances on both the high voltage side and the low voltage side of the transformer will be exactly the same, just like how the per unit impedance of circuit C and the per unit impedance of circuit B are the same. Now we can see that circuit A and circuit B are the primary and secondary side of the first transformer respectively. Logic says that the per unit impedance of circuit A will be equal to that of circuit B. Now let's find out if this statement is actually correct. So we have the base impedance of circuit A to be calculated as the base voltage of circuit A squared divided by the base power of circuit A. The base voltage being 13.8 kV and we squared that divided by 10,000 kVA in power for circuit A and we get 19 ohms. Now the actual impedance of circuit A is basically what we calculate in terms of ohms in circuit B to be reflected on circuit A. Right, So this is all we're doing here is that we're reflecting the 300 ohms from C to B and from C to A considering the transformer turns ratio. So 1200 ohms times 1 over 10th is the transformer turns ratio squared and that gives us 12 ohms. So the ZA which is the per unit impedance of circuit A is equal to the actual impedance of circuit A divided by the base impedance of circuit A which we get as 12 ohms divided divided by 19 ohms and that gives us 0 0.6 3 per unit. So finally we have the per unit impedances in all parts of the circuits in the power system of this example and it equals 0 0.63 per unit in all parts of the circuits which is reflects that when a power system consists of more than one transformer the per unit impedance for every side of every transformer remains the same. Now we can draw the equivalent circuit like this right, which we drew before. It's J0.1 per unit, which is the first transformer impedance, J0.08 per unit, which is the second, and then 0.63 per unit, which is a per unit load of the circuit C. Notice that the multiple voltage levels are eliminated by making use of per unit, and the circuit consists of just impedances that have been reduced to a single voltage level that is common to the entire system. Right? And we also conclude that no matter how many transformer voltage levels are added in a system, we can find the impedance by simply doing calculations for only one side of the one transformer.
See how per unit systems can drastically reduce the mathematics involved. Now in the next video, we will be dealing with an example for a per unit system in a three phase system calculation. Now we hope you have a continued interest in this topic and series as a student professional. And we also hope that you find this content useful and enlightening. Please consider subscribing to generalpack.com and becoming our patron at patreon.com slash generalpack. Thank you.